And we went to our first bandolier holiday sale with 135 towels, and we sold them all. And that's when we kind of realized that this might be something that would work. Today's topic is how to grow a socially responsible business with Kay and Molly. Welcome to the Well Woman Show, where we interview women executives, leaders, and entrepreneurs. And you're listening to the Well Woman Show, where motivated women achieve fulfillment and well being. You're listening to the Well Woman Show. Take time for myself by coming to things like Well Woman Drinks, to be accepting of myself no matter what. Step away from judgment as much as possible. You're listening to The Well Women Show. Just, you're going to be in for a good ride. I don't regret anything. Everything I've ever done, I've learned from it, one way or another, good or bad. Being a little bit selfish for yourself, you know, put your own oxygen mask on first and then give what's left. I'm a woman. I would prefer to, to tell my own story. My story, though it's very personal, is universal. You're listening to The Well Woman Show. And now your host, Giovanna Rossi. Hi, Giovanna Rossi here, and welcome to another episode of The Well Woman Show, where I interview women leaders, executives, and entrepreneurs about their lives and their road to becoming and being who they are today. Are you feeling burned out or finding it hard to focus on your goals, or are you in transition? Well, you're not alone. We all need to activate our superpowers. These are the internal strengths and abilities we all already have, but don't use all the time. Superpowers can be cultivated, and they include empathy, love, intuition, courage, and more. As always, this episode is brought to you by Well Woman Life, a global community of women living our best lives. Whether it's your health, relationships, your money, or making an impact in your community and the world, Well Woman Life has you covered. You've made a commitment to not settle, to use your voice, and to live your best life. Well Woman Life offers annual memberships, workshops, and retreats to support you. Check out wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook to join our growing community. Now back to the show. Today's topic is how to grow a socially responsible business, and hopefully by the end of the show, you'll be inspired to promote responsible business practices in your own life. My guests today are the owners of Kay and Molly Textiles. Kay and Molly opened their textile company in 2010 with the goal of providing good jobs to the refugee community in their neighborhood. As immigrants themselves, they wanted to help make the transition easier for others. Their business has grown steadily since, and they now have a booming online business, several full-time employees, and a newly opened retail store. In this episode, Kay and Molly discuss the secrets to their success, including a deep commitment to feminist-centered business practices. On the show today, we're going to learn about why they decided not to make their business a nonprofit. Kay and Molly's advice to other social entrepreneurs, how they ease the transition of immigration for their employees, and lots more. So definitely stay tuned. This is a great interview with both of the owners. And the free giveaway is at the show notes page, which is wellwomanlife.com slash 094 show. And I want to let you know that the holiday party is fast approaching. In fact, it might be on the day that this show is released. So check out wellwomanlife.com slash events for more information. And if you're local in New Mexico or in the area, we are doing a Well Woman Advocacy Day on January 31st which is um, a full day training on how to engage on the policy issues that you care about, how to lobby and how to make an impact. You can go to wellwomanlife.com slash events for more information about that. Now to my interview with Kay and Molly. Welcome to the program. Thank Thank you you for having us. Okay. I'm so excited to talk to you. I'm sitting here in your uh, what do you call this? Your studio, your pr- production studio <laughs> and retail space. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. I was able to walk through and see women um, actually printing um, and see the retail space, which is gorgeous. It's just so colorful. Um, tell me, Kay, what are you up to here? So we are so excited to have our first holiday season in our new space. We moved into this building in February and opened the store later in the spring. And now we're here in full production with a great store for the holiday season. And Molly, tell me about what you actually do here for people who might not be familiar with Kay and Molly Textiles. And 
why is it important for women's lives and well-being? We started this um, in 2010, and Kay and I got together and uh, decided to, to create a social enterprise where we would offer jobs to um, immigrant and refugees in the international district of Albuquerque, which is one of the poorest districts. And so that's how we started as a, just a plan. And then we discussed how we were going to do this and how, you know, what kind of a production we would have. And Kay said, well, she could do food or she could do printing because she had experience with both of those in both of those areas. And I, um, said that I would rather do printing than cooking. And so she taught me how to print. And we went to our first bandolier holiday sale with 135 towels, and we sold them all. And that's when we kind of realized that this might be something that would work. And then um, we printed more, and we slowly but surely grew. And after about a year or two, we were able to hire our first refugee. And uh, it's been kind of building up since then. Okay, so Kay, you built this really from scratch, from starting at a holiday bazaar at an elementary school. Um, and now how many employees do you have and what is the impact that you're making here? So we, uh, Molly and I included, there are 10 of us now working here and we're so pleased to be able to provide jobs. And um, the majority of our workers are immigrants or refugees um, and they come here really with nothing and they're asked to find jobs within six months. And um, so we are so happy to be that transition point for, for these women who work with us. Uh, we've had over two, two dozen people work, you know, come through our studio. Some of them leave, find jobs you know, decide to live in different cities. Um, so not everyone stays with us, but we've had, we have had a few who have been with us and we're so happy to be able to provide um, pretty much full-time work for everyone who comes. Wow. And you're not a nonprofit, you're a for-profit. That's right. Um, Molly and I decided from the very beginning to not be a nonprofit, that we wanted this business to stand on its own legs. Um, we both have experience working years in the nonprofit sector, and we just did not want to chase grant money. Um, it's kind of a harder thing to do every year, I think. Um, so the business stands on its own, and we're, we've been able to create jobs and expand and buy this building on the merits of the business itself. Wow, so you bought this building. Okay, I didn't realize that. Um, and Molly... What can you tell listeners who might be really interested in creating their own social enterprise and this idea of, wow, I could really make an impact in my community? What what advice would you give them? And, and like, how did you make that happen with hiring immigrants and refugees? Um, so being an entrepreneur is hard work. And um Kay and I both have very similar work ethics, and we both like to work hard. So that was the first requirement, I think. But social enterprises are especially rewarding because um, you're, you're working with our local community. It makes you love your local community more. It gives you daily um, feedback and a satisfaction. Um, the advice I would give people is... Think it through carefully, have a plan. Um, don't be too stuck on what your product is, but find something that will sell or that, you know, that you're in love with, but don't be too stuck on it. And um, we're always trying to re sort of, you know, re redefine what we sell and try to find things that will work. And um, yeah, what else? I don't know. Do you have any other ideas, Kay? Well, I think um, one thing that Molly and I did when we first started the business was every weekend for two years, we went to every single art show that we could get into. And we kept testing our product, testing the price point, testing the colors. Molly and I had visions of the colors being very different than what we offer today, more muted and a little more, you know, just our taste. But then we realized, oh, these bright colors are really hitting it, um, you know, the our clients are really loving them. And so we change that. So when Molly says, don't be stuck on one idea, it's, I think 
for any entrepreneur, you have to kind of respond to what the market is telling you. And we've been willing to do that. We've been willing to test various products, test price points, um, figure that piece out. So that has worked out really well. So the flexibility has has been key for us. Mm. And um, when you when you started this, did either of you have a business background or marketing background? So I actually have an MBA, and I went to school specifically to figure out how to start a social enterprise um, coming from the nonprofit sector. Um, just the idea of offering a paycheck to someone opened so many doors, um, and that's what I wanted to use business for. And so Molly has a, an amazing background as a teacher, as an educator, and she has worked with immigrants for years and years and years as well. So I knew that, um, you know, if we came together, it would be a great great kind of collaboration. And Molly, what is, uh, what is your goal? I mean, and, and this is maybe for both of you, but what is the overall vision and goal uh, you're able to impact about, you know, 10 employees right now, but do you have sort of a large overarching vision? That's a good question. Um, I'm always the one who's like, very content with what's happening. And Kay is the one with a vision. And she's always the one who's stretching us further and further. So I learn a lot from just seeing her um, develop the business and working with her. We work together on everything. All the decisions are made together. But um, the overall vision initially was very different. I would have been happy with five employees. And Kay was like, no, I think we'll have 20 employees. <laughs> so we're still working on our overall vision. And it's something we touch base once a year, we have a real nitty gritty down to earth discussion about what our plans are. And that one's coming up soon. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll, we'll rehash that. And I think that now it's pretty clear, uh, if we can manage to help more people, we will try and do that. And we'll see how we do it. We tend to grow sort of organically and slowly so that we're not overwhelmed by what confronts us. And, um, yeah, I can't tell you exactly, but... <laughs> Kay, do you want to add to that? Well, I mean, buying this building, that was one of our goals just, you know, three or four years ago when we realized we needed a bigger space and how great it would be to have our own space and be able to reconfigure it to what we need. And so that's a goal that we've reached. Um I do see us growing and I think anywhere, you know, two dozen people, I think that's an ideal, ideal number for a business to still feel like a family and still feel connected to each other without getting too big. So, um, I would love to see that happen in the next, I don't know how many years, but to, to reach that goal. And, and once we get there, we can reassess. Mm -hmm. And what can you tell, um, the listeners about the people that you employ, like, do, can you give some specific examples of the women that you're impacting? Well, Molly and I um, are immigrants ourselves. We really have have lived abroad and coming to the U.S. and making uh, a, ho a home here has been kind of an immigrant journey for us. So our employees, we really do understand and relate to what it means to be in a different in a different culture. Um, but a lot of our women's come, women come from a refugee background where they have, you know, had to escape war or very difficult circumstances. And so when they come here, they, they come here with a dream and with, um, just hope, I guess. And we are so happy to be able to provide a job that, um, treats them, treats them with dignity. That's kind of our, our value system here. Molly and I really believe that even if you come here without much education or without much skill, we are patient and willing to teach, um, but really believe that everyone has dignity inside them and should be respected. And so that's what we hope to do. And do you offer um, education? Like, do people need to learn English? Do they need, how do you handle, you know, healthcare? Like, what are some of the social aspects? So we usually, we generally now work with uh, Lutheran Family Services. And they're one of our, um, in Albuquerque, they're one of the organizations that does uh, refugee resettlement. And so when they, when the refugees first arrive, they arrange for ESL classes, they arrange for apartments, they arrange for healthcare. 
But as time progresses, the Lutheran Family Services role diminishes, and we kind of step in when we need to. But Lutheran has been great and very supportive all along when we had questions. So we've had all kinds of situations in the last seven years. Um, But what we offer as an organization is um, an educational benefit every year for every woman. They get $250 to um, further their own education. It doesn't matter whether it's ESL or another, you know, if they want to learn how to sew or they want to take a class outside of our business. We encourage that. And um, health care, it's the same thing. We make sure that we work with the organizations to make sure they get covered. And um, we personally don't offer that yet. Maybe in the future we'll be able to offer health care, but we can't yet. But we also have a benefit for um, expenses, out-of-pocket expenses that we will be willing to cover. If- and what about if women have kids and they need to take uh, time off because their kids are sick, or if they want to attend a parent-teacher conference, how do you handle that, Kay? So with that, um, uh, we do offer two hours of paid leave if you need to go see uh, your teacher, uh, parent-teacher conferences. So we do give a two-hour window, and we will pay for that. So um, we encourage our families to be involved with their kids' education. Not a problem. We have five days of paid sick leave, so that's something that's automatic that you get once you become an employee. And that is to really encourage people to stay home if they're sick, you know, to take care themselves and not to come here and and make us all sick. So that's something just from a business point of view makes real good sense for us. Um, and, uh, and then, as Molly said, the education and health benefit, we really do hope people take time off to get a massage if they need to, and we'll pay for that, or to go and um, see an acupuncturist and try different things that might help them. Um, so that's something that we feel strongly about. Mm-hmm. And let me ask you, um, do you, uh, have you heard about the Family Friendly Business Award? Because it seems like you might qualify for that. <laughs> I will give you the information afterwards. Um, you know, being a family friendly business includes flexible scheduling, um, paid time off, like some of the things that we've already talked about. So, and one other thing, our schedule, um, starts from 8.30 and ends at 2.30. And so we listened to our women who said, you know, we need to be home to be, to, to be able to take care of our kids or when they come home from school, they need to, to be at home. And so we do, um, do that. We, our schedule is flexible that way. And then if, if people decide, okay, well, I don't need to be home until four o'clock, maybe we'll, you know, adjust their schedule that way. So we are flexible. You're listening to The Well Woman Show. I'm with Kay and Molly of Kay and Molly Textiles, and we have been talking about their business, their social enterprise, and um, we're going into a segment called Superpowers for Success. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Being a well woman includes being financially healthy. Our sponsors, Lorraine L. and Kate Stalter of Better Money Decisions, are on a mission to eliminate complexity and confusion from your financial life. They replace Wall Street jargon with straightforward talk you can understand, and they create investment and retirement plans customized for your needs and your future. Download a free copy of their latest book, Don't Let Your Money Kick the Bucket Before You Do, and learn how to avoid the biggest mistakes women make when planning for retirement. Go to bettermoneydecisions.com slash wellwoman and download your free book today. And this is where you share um, some details about your own personal lives that may help give other women who are listening some insight into your leadership and your your lives as business owners, as women, as moms. And so, Kay, I want to start with you and ask you, what does success in life mean for you? I think for me personally, it's to be productive and to be useful. Um, whether that's with my family or with um, the community that I'm in or at work, I really do feel that, you know, I'm here to help other people. And um, so I, I feel successful personally when I've been able to achieve that. And Molly? Hmm. <laughs> you want to pass on that one? <laughs> okay. So, Kay, let me continue with you. When did you know you were really good at what you do? 
I think I've been a good organizer from when I was in school, really. <laughs> I'm being in the student council and organizing dances or whatever. Um, so that I've always known I had that skill. Um, but working in the nonprofit world really gave me uh, a sense of purpose and what your daily work could mean to other people. Okay. And can you describe um, a personal habit that you have that contributes to your well-being? Because, you know, as a business owner and a mom and running this whole enterprise, you have to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And so do you have like a daily practice? I don't have a daily practice, but I think I'm conscious of not stressing to the point where I can't sleep. You know, maybe in my 20s, when I was doing things that I never thought I'd be doing at that age, um, I just worried a lot. And as I've grown older and become a mother and try to teach my kids, um, and they teach me too, just not to stress so much. And I think I go to bed pretty happy every night. and I don't have those worries. So that's something that I'm conscious of as I grow older. Okay. So how do you just not stress? I mean, because that is something that a lot of people are trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, clearly you have stressors in your life Mm -hmm. and you're running this big business. Um, what, how do you, how do you do that? I think I'm, I'm aware that there are things that you can change and things that you can't change. Um, and the things that I can't change at that moment, I am happy to let go. So when I say that I don't stress going to bed, I think I just have gotten mature enough to realize like if something needs to get done, it'll get done tomorrow, not tonight. And worrying about it doesn't help me. (laughs) So it's just that understanding. I love that because that is really not the um, mainstream sort of model of how how people deal with <laughs> life usually. Um, and I love your example there because you you are an example of a successful woman and you don't you don't feel like you have to get stressed out all the time about about everything. So I think that's a great example. Molly. Well, I think working with a partner is very important, too. And and, uh, we rely on each other enormously. And we can also pull away when we really need to. So that's uh, been a life changer for me. I ran a nonprofit by myself before, which was very hard. And to have somebody who you know you can trust and rely on at all times, and when you are... And we touch base every morning. And whether it's, um, you know home issues, whatever it could be that bother us, we have a place, we have somebody to talk to and share with and um, get that off our back. And we also deal with um, inner conflicts that way within the group that we try and resolve these issues as quickly as possible so that we can have a happy place to work. And I think um, Kay and I, you know, talking about wellness, we both go to the gym occasionally, not all, not very regularly, but, you know, we try to have a happy life outside as well. And I think it's important to have that balance between the two. Okay. And you brought up conflict resolution within the team. What is your process for that? That's an interesting question because we have, uh, what we've done in the past is try and deal with it very directly with individuals, but we also have group meetings where we air all the complaints and everybody has a voice. And um, of course, we have conflicts. We're dealing with very, very different cultures, different languages, different backgrounds, um, different education. And so there are always issues. But uh, I think we've really learned how to keep it smooth and friendly and happy. And that's a constant, a constant thing. We're always conscious about that. And Kay, what superpower did you discover you had only to realize it was there all the time? (laughs) (laughs) Huh, superpower did I discover? Maybe patience. I think when I was younger, I felt that maybe I was always really too driven and too, you know, eager to get things done quickly. But 
now I feel like I'm pretty patient and I'm willing to, to let things unfold. And, um, but it maybe that's something I've, I've always had inside me, the willingness to, to wait and see. And Molly, what advice would you give your 25 year old self? Hmm. Um, I think I would probably say, don't feel like you have to save the world, which I think my daughter right now feels like she has to save the world and she's about that age. And um, I think that you can just plug along and do what you really are passionate about and um, keep everyone else in mind, not just yourself. And uh, enjoy life because, man, it's a fun ride. (laughs) And I want to ask you both, on The Well Woman Show, we often talk about the definition of feminism being working for um, political, economic, and uh, social equality. Do you identify as feminists or is this, you know, sort of a feminist run business? I absolutely (laughs) identify as a feminist and I, I have for as long as I understood what that word meant. Um, and I feel grateful that throughout my career and throughout college, I had really wonderful women role models and, um, who themselves would call, you know, feminist. And so, um, I have no problems with that word. And I do think that we are a feminist centered business in that way. And Molly, I'll second that. I totally agree. My role model model was my mother, and she came out as a feminist in her middle ages, and um, it's all good. We stand strongly behind that word. Okay, last question on a a light note here. Um, What are you reading right now? What's on your nightstand? I'm reading Nicole Krause's newest book, and I think it's called forest dark or dark forest. I can't quite remember, but it's on my nightstand. And when I get a chance, I read a couple of pages before I go to bed. And Molly? I'm actually reading a guidebook for Vietnam right now because I'm planning a trip to Vietnam because one of my daughters is there. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you so much for being on the show. And we're going to link to your to the information that so people can find you on the show notes at wellwomanlife.com slash KUNM. And we uh, will also post some pictures of the products that you have because they're just, they're beautiful. And I want people to see what it is that you're making here. Um, So thank you so much for being on the program. Thank you. Thank you for having us. As a special bonus for this holiday season Uh, episode of the Well Woman Show, I wanted to share with you some self-care tips for the holidays. Now, you might be thinking, self-care during the holidays? How's that going to work? I'm so busy. There's so much to do. But I really want you to stop and think to yourself, what would self-care really feel like for me during the holidays? And what can I say no to that I've been doing over the years that I really don't need to be doing or don't want to be doing. So you might think about your shopping, your sharing time with friends, your um, cooking, preparing, hosting, attending parties, all of these things that we do. What, which ones of those things are nurturing to you and and feeding you and which ones are depleting you and you're doing purely out of obligation. And a nice little exercise that I love is to just jot it down, literally take a piece of paper and write two columns and put nurture and then uh, on one column and on the other column, you write deplete and just start filling those uh, in with all of the things you do during the holidays. And you'll soon find the the list for you that feels like self care. So and you might need to add some things that you hadn't, you know, hadn't hadn't thought of. Um, Definitely, I know if you don't plan things, then they don't happen. So if you really feel like you've got to have a you know, decadent, luxurious bubble bath once a week during the holidays, uh, plan it in, you know, put it in the calendar, put it on your list. 
And the key message here is how can we take care of ourselves so that we aren't depleted and so that we really enjoy the holidays so we can be present in the moment with our loved ones and family and friends. And if you have any other suggestions for self-care during the holidays, I would love to hear them. Um, you can go to wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook to join our free community group. And we are having a whole discussion about self-care during the holidays over there. And I'd love to see you there. That's it for our show today. Remember, if you need support to live your Well Woman life, head over to wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook to join us. Our monthly live event, Well Woman Drinks, brings women together to share our successes and challenges as women, leaders, moms, aunts, sisters, and all the other roles we carry. If you'd like to attend a Well Woman Drinks near you, or if there isn't one in your city yet and you'd like to start one, email info at wellwomanlife.com. If you enjoyed the show, please take a moment and subscribe in iTunes and leave a review. This helps raise visibility, which is super helpful when it comes to producing the show every week. For feedback, comments, or just to let me know you were listening today, find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Well Woman Life. I'm Giovanna Rossi for The Well Woman Show. Oh, 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 o